Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to add dimension to a balayage, how to touch up a balayage, and how to do a roux touch up all in one process. So stay tuned. excited to dive in because this is something that I get asked a lot and I know it can be sometimes a little confusing on how to add in low lights, how to do a balayage or a balayage touch up with a root touch up, how do I do it with a root color and so today we're going to be diving into that specifically and make it really easy because all of that stuff can be done in one step in one process. It doesn't need to be done individually and this is actually going to save you tons and tons of time so let's dive in. All right, so this is our before. You guys can see it's just been a little while since she's had her color done. And we're gonna be kind of working with her natural color, but we're definitely gonna add in a lot more contrast, brighten up her blondes, and actually adding some depth in there too. So I'm really excited to do this because I think that this is gonna look so fun and just give her hair color just a little bit more pop. All right, so I'm gonna be mixing up her base and we're also gonna use that kind of as her low light. And so I'll show you guys exactly how we're gonna do that in the technique, but I'm gonna actually be using Goldwell Color Ounce and I love using this color line because it doesn't shift the natural base. It's a demi line and it just deposits, but it doesn't over deposit. So I personally love using this specific line for this technique because I don't have to stress about it if it sits on too long or anything like that. So we're actually gonna be mixing up 6N with just a little splash of 7G and I'm excited for you guys to see exactly how we incorporate this in. And then for her lightener, we're gonna be mixing up 25 volume. So what I did was I kept her natural part and then I went through and just sectioned out the front from the back. And I always like to work in the back quadrant, especially when we're doing this type of technique. Now I'm gonna do one more thing where I'm just going to kind of um, separate out this top section from the bottom. And the reason why is we're gonna be applying her base color and we're gonna be using that as our low light. And so I just like to keep it a little bit separated so that we don't have different things going on. We don't have like, it doesn't get all messy because this technique can definitely get messy. And you guys will notice I am wearing gloves for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start applying her root color that we mixed up, that root low light. And I'm just gonna apply it all the way through her roots, through this section, and then I'll show you guys what we're gonna do. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to take a diagonal back section. Now her hair is pretty short and we are gonna cut it up just a little bit. So I'm not too worried about getting a lot of these like baby hairs or that lower angle, but I do wanna make sure that there is some brightness so when she wears her hair, if she does see it, that she has some lightness in there. So I'm gonna clip up the rest of this section. And again, you guys can see, because I'm doing this in kind of quadrants, it keeps it a lot cleaner than if I was doing it a different way. So we'll comb this through. And I'm just gonna kind of do a weave here. And it's okay if some of these baby hairs fall out. Like I said, this length down here, I'm not too concerned about it. I'm more so worried about our canvas right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my comb and I'm just gonna kind of, um, actually I'm gonna grab a uh, less, so this would be a wide tooth comb, but I'm actually gonna grab a not wide tooth comb. My brain cannot think of the word right now. Found one, this would be a fine tooth comb, not a wide tooth comb. Now I can remember it. Anyways, okay. So we are moving on. I'm going to tease this here. And the reason why I switched out my comb was because I want to make sure that when we tease her hair, she's got this fine stick straight hair, that when we actually tease it, we're actually pushing the hair up versus a wide tooth comb just wouldn't get that result. So um, we're gonna just kind of tease it in there a little bit. And then I'm gonna grab my foil. And we're not gonna be doing a ton, a ton of lightness down here, but we are gonna be doing just a, a bit. And so I'm going to use my root color that I dragged down and I'm just gonna kind of apply it there. Now the cool thing about this is, if you guys have watched any of my other foliage technique videos, this would be acting as my blending agent. So if you guys have seen the other ones, I use a different uh, thing for that. But this we're using the root color that we already have. So I'm gonna kind of pick up this piece right here because she already has some lightness in there. We don't wanna over lighten that. But I'm gonna go in with my lightener and just apply it down here. And then we're gonna kind of blend it in to that root color or AKA our blending agent. 
So the cool thing about this is, is it's saving time and I'm not having to go back in with the blending agent. We're doing it all at once. I know a lot of times when people are darkening the base or for instance, maybe covering gray, um, they go in, they cover the gray, and then they rinse it out after they process it, blah, blah, blah. And then they go back in and do foliage pieces. So this would actually save you so, so much time without having to do that extra step. And then I'm gonna take a clean dry brush and what I'd like to do is just kind of blur that line. So I wipe it off in between and you guys can see I'm just kind of blurring that out just a tiny, tiny bit. You do have to be a little bit careful when you are doing a root color into this um, because it can sometimes get a little bit spottier. So then we're just gonna apply that foil. We're gonna fold it up. And I always just like to lock it into place right here. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, give another diagonal back piece and continue from there. Okay, so now I have my two diagonal back pieces, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a straight across piece here. You guys are gonna see, it's a pretty big triangle section. And so we'll clip this little guy up, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to weave out our foliage piece, or our light piece. You guys can see she doesn't have really any lightness down here, but I'm gonna clip this up out of the way because I want this to now be a low light. Now, the cool thing is, because we're segmenting out our foliage pieces, I don't have to take this low light and put it in a foil. Could I? Absolutely. But because she's got short hair and we've got her covered with a towel, I'm just gonna apply the low light formula, the same root color, just right here, and it just saves me so much time. So I apply it in, and then I just wash off my hands you know, on a towel, and then go right in for my foliage piece. So it really saves you a lot of time. You don't have to add in extra foils, um, and I just really like that. So that's another reason why I love doing this technique for somebody that wants a transformation like this. Okay, so we're grabbing our foil. We'll apply just a little bit more root color. Sometimes you don't have to reapply if there's enough like liquid up there, but for this one I wanted to. And then I'm just gonna go in, apply my foliage, and just continue up. All right, so this is my last little section here, and I'm actually just going to apply a low light for this section. So once I'm done with this little bottom section, we're gonna move up and just continue up the head, go into this next little quadrant. Okay, so we finished applying it to this little quadrant, just at the root, and I'm gonna do another diagonal back, and this is gonna be another foliage piece. We'll do another thing on the other side. Foliage, and you guys will notice that sometimes when I am doing colors like this, the hair that I leave out in between this foliage, I might add it as a low light, but because she's got a little bit of warmth in there, a little bit of lightness, she actually likes the warmth. And so we're gonna utilize that um, with this piece. So I'm not gonna um, cover up this piece with a low light. That's why adding in low lights down here and kind of popping them throughout kind of really works for this technique um, and makes it just look really good. So we're getting a lot of different colors, almost three different colors in there. Now one thing I will mention, you guys can see when I tease that, there was a lot of dry hair up here that didn't have the color through it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to squish it in there and make sure that we get all of that color all the way through that section. Another reason why I like using Goldwell's Colorants is because it actually is pretty liquid and gets through there pretty good versus like a permanent color, you do have to squish it in there just a bit more. So now we'll go in with our lightener. And again, I'm not overly lightening these ends that kind of have some lightness already. I'm not like squishing it in there, just kind of barely dragging that through and then blending it up into this piece. Now, one thing that I will mention is, you guys can see we teased it all in here and now we're gonna blend it into this area. One thing you don't wanna do is you do not wanna start blending up into this teased area because that's gonna create spottiness. So making sure that when you are blending it, you're blending it on what I would call a clean surface down here, not the teased area. Um, so I'm getting pretty close here. Obviously this is a technique I do all the time. I feel very confident with it. But if it's something new for you guys, be just very aware when you're kind of teasing up or blending into that teased area um, that you're not you know, squishing it in there because I would hate for you to have a bunch of bleed marks in there. All right, so what I decided to do was just a couple diagonal back and then straight across diagonal back, kind of that V section, very similar to the way that I do all my other foliage videos. So again, 
definitely make sure to go check those out. So now we've gotten to this little top triangle section here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to kind of blend that in. We're going to weave this piece out here on the top. So I'm actually gonna weave one, and I'm gonna do a thicker weave right here. I'm going to leave this out. I'm gonna let this just remain as kind of natural. I'm gonna have this be a low light. I am gonna put this one in a foil just because we have some uh, natural hair next to it. So we'll pop this guy in as our low light. Again, just to get that contrast. And again, this one's gonna be right up against that foliage piece, kind of right in between it. And that's why I did it a little bit chunkier. Um, I know sometimes that might freak you out as a low light thinking it's gonna be really chunky or like the 90s look. It's definitely not. It's just gonna add that contrast that she really wants. Okay, so then this is gonna be our last foliage piece right here in the back section. I'm going to start my teasing from down here. And one thing I will mention, as you guys can see, um, this comb could get a little like messy, so you might wanna kind of brush it off in between um, doing this because nothing's worse than getting a bunch of like dark color down there. So just again, being very aware of keeping your sections clean and everything really clean. Okay, so we've teased it. I'm going to grab my foil, place it down right there. I'm going to resaturate that root area, that teased area just like I showed you, and then go in with our foliage. Place that foil on top, fold the corners down, and lock it into place. And if you guys were wondering, I did switch to these kind of fun foils just because I was like, you know what, let's have a little fun with it. These are a little bit cleaner and actually grip a little bit better, so I liked using them. These are from Framar, they're their ethereal foils, and I actually have them linked in my Amazon affiliates. So you guys can uh, click the link in the description box below, it'll take you to my Amazon favorites, and you guys can check out these foils there too. All right, so I went through and applied the root color to both quadrants of the front. I just decided to go for it because she doesn't have a lot of hair on this side because she does part her hair further over, so just thought it'd be easier. So what I am gonna do is I'm going to kind of part her hair just a little bit further over, and we're gonna kind of do just a piece in the front as kind of her money piece. So her hairline does kind of dip down right here. So that's just something to really keep in mind with your clients. We don't want her money piece to be super solid, but we do want to have a little bit of pop of something there. So it's basically at the widest point, about an inch wide, but then at the smallest point, it is about like a half inch. So I'm going to just go in and we're gonna do my money piece just like I do for all my other foliage videos. But the cool thing is, because we already have her root color applied, we don't have to do a blending agent. So again, saving us time and just keeping it as clean as possible. So I am gonna drag this down just a little bit more and I'm gonna lift it off of her face just because there is color underneath this foil and I don't wanna squish it on her face. We probably will have to clean her up a little bit here after this, but we'll just apply her lightener and then go up and blend it into that blending agent slash root color. And I'm only gonna fold this one corner because you guys can see I do have a little bit of lightness right in here and I don't wanna squish it onto that color, so um, we'll just leave it there. I'll even put a foil down here just to keep it clean. Again, this can get really, really messy, so trying to keep it as clean as possible. Again, you guys are gonna see it's getting on her forehead a little bit, but we're gonna work quickly and it'll be okay because we'll clean it up off of her. We'll leave that section out and I'm gonna do two more foliage pieces. I finished those pieces and before I lay her foil down I always would check to make sure you guys saw that I went through and kind of cleaned it up but just making sure that we don't have like a ton of color laying down there and I did use a pre-guard cream from Wella that's one of my favorite ones uh, to use because it definitely helps with that issue all right so we're gonna fold these foils down making sure to leave these little hairs out here and then we're gonna go on to the sides Okay, so now I've started on the side, and again, this is just very similar to what I do for my foliage. I really like this piece around the face because it gives that beautiful brightness when the client wears their hair back. Um, so I'm going in just how I traditionally do. Again, if you guys want to see more of that, watch one of my other foliage videos. Um, but we're just going in, going to blend it up, 
and then right behind it we're actually going to do a low light to get that contrast in there so again if you're backing up a highlight with a deeper low light you're going to see that contrast versus just kind of blending it all in there so again for this look that's what we're going for and i think it's gonna look good So the next section is sectioned out our leave that piece out here this is going to be our highlight and then this is going to be a low light i am going to put this one in a foil just because there are some lighter pieces around it and i don't want them to get touched um, but again low light here and then highlight right behind it again All right, so now that we've pulled out all her foils, one of the things that can sometimes happen whenever you have a root color going on, it can start to stain the scalp. So what I like to do is I like to actually get my hands wet um, with my gloves on, and then I go in and I just kind of massage out this color. Now, again, with the gold ball color on, it's not gonna stain nearly as bad as a permanent color, but I do like to just kind of massage this in and really use that color to start to lift it out of the skin. And every time I do this, because I use that well approved pre-guard and then I do this technique, my clients very rarely stain, even the clients that stain really badly. So this works really well and I definitely recommend trying it out, especially when you guys are using that permanent color. So for her toner, I'm mixing up 9P and 9N with clear. So I'm gonna do half an ounce of these two together. So that'll be one ounce total. So half ounce, half ounce, and then one ounce of our crystal clear, and then two ounces of developer. No need to fight about it. Easy come, easy go. No stress, I'm good without it. Easy come, easy go. Let's keep it fun and simple. final look I love how it turned out it's nothing crazy it's not like too contrasted I know sometimes it can look a little scary when those low lights or that base is processing but you guys can just see how like the caramel tones really kind of hit off the lighter pieces and everything just looks so blended, very fun, and a lot more pops of color. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed watching that YouTube video, and I hope that you learned something, maybe new, maybe something different, or hopefully you learned even just one more technique that you can add to your arsenal. As always, if you haven't hit that subscribe button down below, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the little bell, because if you tap that bell button down there, you're gonna be one of the first people to know when I release new YouTube videos, and you're gonna be one of the first people to watch them. If you haven't already come over to Instagram, Instagram and said hi or sent me a DM before, please do so. I love getting to chat with everybody who watches my YouTube videos and I'm in my DMs every single day and that is the best place to contact me. So if you watch this video, you found it helpful, send me a DM and let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. It's no sweat, it's no sweat.